Hello. So I understand that this is very late. It's done with the first month of 2020, but I'm here to do my favorite books of 2019 because I haven't done it yet because I'm bad at this whole tube thing. But uh, let's do it. So I don't think I have a specific order really for any of these. Um, I narrowed it down to about 10-ish. I will save like number ones favorite favorites till the end of course just for that suspense um but yeah so let's just uh get into it i was gonna start with an honorable mention but i think i'll start with the book that i don't have a physical copy for and that is 20th century ghost by joe hill it is one of his short story collections and i fucking loved it it's like my i'm not the biggest fan of short story collections just in general this was so so good so so good his writing is just so beautiful and engaging and like i literally like get got so hooked in the like in on the first page and i'm like it's only five pages what is going on like i fucking loved it um i could tell you my favorite stories in the thing like pop art it's been a while since i read whole collection but like some of them they really remind me i thought this beautiful concept called destiny taking into your own hands and i'm like yes um better than home that's about baseball and father and a child in the rundown oh god this is the one that I needed it to be longer. I was like, I had so many thoughts and days, and I had so many things. Like, oh my god, you know, in this direction, and then that would be really cool this way, or this way, that would be super cool. Didn't happen. Um, Deadwood. That's four paragraphs. Four paragraphs about phantom trees. Yeah. Oh my god. That was one of the most beautiful things. That shit read like poetry. I want to write poetry about phantom trees. Like that's like a theme and a concept that I'm like, it's literally had that left my mind since I read the short story. Like I am constantly thinking about that and how I can implement that into writing in any kind of way or storytelling. Um, Bobby Conroy comes back from the dead. This one's on the set of like um. Um, this is on the set of Dawn of the Dead, I believe, and so good. I loved it. It was very, like, no, these are, like, good stories. Or, like, horror, even. I don't think so. Um, this is one that I was just so, like, invested in for some reason. I was like, I would love to see where this would go, because it could just stay, like, as normal as it was, or we could take it into a very, like, creepy horror-esque sort of thing if you wanted to. And I was like, oh, my God, please. Uh, my father's mask. This one was weird. This one I wrote, it was disturbingly weird, and I loved it. I feel like when I wrap, in a wrap up, I said it kind of reminded me of Us, the Jordan Hill movie. I think I, I think that's about it, but it was just fucking weird and I loved it. Oh, uh, and then, okay, his acknowledgement, instead of writing, like, actual acknowledgements, he added another, like, short story and I really went two pages, and it was basically, like, about his father, saw Stephen King, and I don't know the dude, and it's so funny, but think about that one a lot, because, like, if you know it's not Stephen King, it's kind of obvious that it's about him, like, without having to say it, it's about his father who writes and it has a lot of his writing habits in there and stuff, and I really loved the story itself, but I loved that he kind of dedicated it, that whole thing to his dad, because I was part of the big thing in his writing. Joe Hill, fantastic one of my like favorite authors now i need to finish reading the rest of his books next let's talk about is this an honorable mention talk about persepolis um by again i still have yet to look up the author's name i'm so fucking sorry i love this it is a graphic memoir of the author's life um growing up in revolutionary iran and i love this so fucking much so fucking much. i really love the art I thought it was great. I loved how flawed our main character was. <laughs> She's not a main character. It's her life. I loved her voice. I loved everything about it. I loved how much history was in this that, like, tied into her own life. Obviously, living in revolution in Iran and just Iran in general, you know? But it was just so, like, charming. And it was great seeing the times when she really did fuck up. And other times, like, there was a lot of moments where she was questioning her face and questioning just the world around her and how she was perceived in different places and how she didn't fit in in different places. How she had different ideas from the people that she grew up with and where she lived. Like, it was just a lot of figuring yourself out and finding your place, and I fucking loved that. And going on with that, let's talk about Darius the Great is Not Okay by Adib Karam. This was, like, one of my very first reads of the year. Um, basically, you follow our main character, Darius, and he is half Persian. He's Persian-American. I feel like this was on a lot of people's 2018 favorites list, but this really, really just resonated with me because I related so much to Darius. So, basically, he's Persian-American, and he does not feel like he fits in anywhere. He obviously looks very different than his white american classmates there's that but then at home and stuff he doesn't really feel like he belongs there either because um in the book his family um go to iran because of 
I believe one of the grandparents is sick and all this stuff. And so he doesn't feel like he belongs with that side of his family either because he doesn't speak their language. He doesn't really know a lot about the culture and social cues and stuff just in general. And he's also depressed. He's on medication for it. And there's subtle LGBT in here going on because he meets this boy and this whole friendship relationship sort of forms. And I just felt this so deeply. It's one of those ones where I'm like reading and crying and I just would think back. People talk about books that are like, oh, that was really important to me or that was really influential to me or that helped me see myself or whatever. Like when people pick up their first like queer book and what in their specific whatever. And I was just like, wow, because I am mixed. I'm half, um, half Mexican. And for the longest time, I rejected that side of me to where when I was younger and my grandparents and my dad's family were around and they would all speak Spanish, I just would refuse to talk and refuse to hear, refuse to learn. And obviously, I, I wanted to be one of the white kids, but then I obviously didn't fit in. I looked very different. My laptop screen is making me look a lot lighter than I am, but um, I didn't look like everybody else. And I had different cultural bringing ups and things in my life. And I just didn't belong with the white kids. But later on, I'm like, I'm trying to regain this the Hispanic side of me, but I can't because I reject you so long. I feel like I don't deserve that place. And it was really crazy seeing that. And then just the whole like depression and taking medication and his father is also on medications, but they don't talk about it. It's like a shameful thing for them and it doesn't bring them any closer, which is heartbreaking to see. And I just really, really felt this deeply. It's one of those ones where I'm like, that is a character that really representative of me and I'm so happy I got to read this and experience that you know I don't know I'm not talking this was like fucking a year ago I'm so bad at talking about books and next is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch this is adult sci-fi I actually did a whole ass review about this this was my first review like single review I think of a book and the only reason I did it was because the size and I had a really funny like trying to put it on myself I'm like that's so funny but like I didn't know how to do it so I was like let me talk about it and then do that anyway i fucking love this now um i'm a huge sci-fi fan i don't read as much as i wish i did but every time i pick up it i almost always enjoy it i am very picky with what i pick up so that's probably why i enjoy it but um get a lot of wrecks from kate so i'm like just pile that in baby but um this was so good again i feel like i won't i cannot cohesively give you a good thoughts on it. I love the entire concept and plot and how real everyone felt. I just feel everything about the story was so well fleshed out, like including the characters. And I feel like in a lot of sci-fi characters just fall so flat because the plot is just so wild and so much is going on and there's so much science thrown at you. But, oh, like that, our main character felt so fucking real. And I was like, his like inner turmoil and his feelings and like the way he felt about his wife i was just like yes bitch yes again i'm gonna just link you to my review okay this is already getting so long guys next is girls made of paper and fire by natasha nyan um i feel like this again is one that was on a lot of people's top books of 2018 but i didn't get to read it until the beginning of 2019 and I fucking loved it. It's sapphic fantasy. Um, there's different case systems and basically about how, the, is it a king? King? Brings in all these different girls from the paper case, I believe. And, um, and basically has them as sex slaves until he picks the one that he like wants or whatever. I didn't, there's a sequel now. I haven't picked it up sadly, but um, I loved this. I just, one, I think it's beautiful, beautiful own voices, um, Asian representation, and that's in fantasy, beautiful, the sapphic, fucking girls loving girls, I love the romance, I, cause it's like forbidden, like it's kind of enemies to lovers, I just, I love it so fucking much, I think about it a lot, there's a lot of lines in here that I just am like, who, the only thing is, it's such a dark subject matter with the sexual, abuse and like it's hard to read sometimes but this is such a necessary book because it's that's real 
and its own voices and there's just so many layers and it's the writing's really beautiful my only thing i believe was her pacing was a little ooh, and she like repeated herself a lot but like it's it's so good so good jungu snoopy everyone jungu snoopy um i'm gonna show you both of these but there is one that's on the list now the one that almost made it i just wanted to talk about them together and that is after dark and what i talk about i talk about writing by haruki Murakami. i read both of these for the readathon that i was doing with kate the Murakami marathon this I'm gonna put it in here because it's my favorite of the fiction I've read from Murakami so far. Haven't read much, but like I loved it. It's like a perfect book for me because basically it's all set in like one day, night, really, and it's very like ominous. You're like seen outside of these characters in the world, and it's really cool. Also, this other parallel that's happening with our main character's sister, who's just been sleeping again. Whole review for this. Whole review for this too, in case you want more. And my thoughts aren't so clear here, but it's genius i loved it the only issue here is the slight like misogyny that's just sprinkled into books like this sometimes i loved it i loved it it was like the right amount of like weirdness going on and like confusion so good i have like this theory about the sister and her sleeping that apparently everyone was like whoa that's so brand new and i never thought about this you're a genius <laughs> things guys that dropped out of college but like this one though this is his memoir that's all about running it's literally just running it's not even like a metaphor for anything you could make it into that because i did for some of it um i read this and it motivated the fuck out of me not even to just run but he's very like lives his life like i want this so i'm gonna do it i'm gonna get it if i can do better i'm gonna do better it's all about doing better than what i was previously doing if I think I can achieve this thing or I should be achieving this thing, then I'm gonna do that. And I'm like, yes, Mirakami, yes. But it's really cool too to see him talk about running and see how that could definitely and is probably applied to other aspects of his life, like writing. And it's so cool. But also in this, he talks a lot about random, like mundane shit about running and things. And I'm like, it was so like interesting like i was so in it and that takes me out of a lot of his books when he writes about the mundane shit because like it's really just like not important and does not help me like anything but in here i fucking loved it he like even when there's things that should sound pretentious to me like in some of his novels that like irk me when he's talking about it in here i'm like yes yes give me all of that i loved this it's uh this is the second memoir i'm talking about but like it's just so good. I should start running again. Next, let's talk about The White Book by Hong Kong. Oh, it's beautiful. It's stunning. Even just this cover is stunning. This is basically a book told through various white objects and concepts and things. Each chapter is just a different little like insert about certain white object or whatever. And I loved it. I love everything I've read by Hong Kong so far. I have read all of her translated into English fiction, I believe. This is all of it. Um, so the vegetarian human acts in this. I just thought it was so genius because it was very simple. And white's the simple color. It's not complex. It's literally an absence of color. I feel like people say that about black. But I feel that more with white. Ethically, this was written to well, who would have been her older sister, but um, she died, like, just after her mother had given birth and all this, whatever, and it feels as if everything she's writing is to that sister about the world she's living in now. It could be as simple as, here, I'm describing snow to you, I'm describing this thing to you, but the underlying of it is very, very, like, Oh, like, um, white, simple color. You think clean, like, pristine, like, hospital fucking floors clean and, like, good, positive. But, like, it was, like, haunting. Hauntingly beautiful. I think that's what I said in my wrap-up. Because it, like, sticks with you and you're just, like, 
whoa, 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 whoa. I thought you were talking about an envelope. What the fuck? And then, like, the latter half sort of, like, flips that. And she's talking about white, like, white space. Negative. The absence of color. And it's, like, this is, like, bad. It started out so innocent. And, like, these are things that are white. Everything's pure. And then all of a sudden it's, like, but I can't see that. You see the world as this in your little two-hour freaking brain and eyes. But I can't see that because destruction and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. It basically felt like you can try to, if you scribble on a wall with black marker and then you try to paint over it with white, you do one coat. It's going to show through. You try to do another coat. It's still going to show through. And then after 50 layers of paint the wall that whole, it's a little weird that whole section you're like i didn't paint the whole wall in five million coats and so it's just like you see you see that spot you're never gonna forget that there was something bad underneath it that there was something that disturbed that clean white wall that's what this felt like that's what that still feels like like just it felt like that reading it and it feels like that now just day to day when i think about it it's just there, stuck in my mind. My top three, top three, they all follow a theme. They're all YA, surprisingly. Not, well, not to, like, dig on YA. I feel like hopefully we've moved past that and just let people fucking read whatever the fuck they want to. But for me, I feel like I enjoy YA because it's just fun and quick, but it's not, like, my favorite thing sometimes. But, uh, some good YA, queer YA, spoiler alert most of this was queer hopefully um i wish you all the best by mason deaver i feel like this was gonna be an obvious one really really so non-binary representation from a non-binary author and it was beautiful basically our main character finally comes out to their parents and sadly parents don't agree with that so they get kicked out reconnect with their sister who they haven't talked to in 10-ish years start living with them go into a different school district where they meet up this boy who they start to have feelings for but it's scary because it's like you're seeing me as something that i'm not someone who i am not I don't know if you'd accept me for who I really am, and I don't know if you would have these feelings for me if I told you who I really am, and all of that. And it deals with heavy, heavy things like coming out and sexuality and gender identity and family issues, obviously big, because like their parents don't agree with this. They just can't accept them. And even later on, when it's like they're trying, they're really not. They just want to look like a good happy family again and then also reconnecting with the sister who they haven't seen in 10 years and it's so good there's um other aspects in here our main character is an artist who draws and wanted to draw the boy that they love and just like and also anxiety anxiety is pretty big in here and like therapy and stuff so it's really cool it talks a lot these in ya like what the non binary rep is just so fucking cool to see especially in ya and then just throw all that in here is just another Mm. um i really love this i don't even know what else to say um it's just really important to have this kind of these kinds of stories for anybody especially accessible at such a young age this is something that i think i really would have loved and needed like three years ago when i was still questioning so many things also this is a beautiful cover everything about this is fucking stunning next two are like like, I, I know the obvious one for number one, and I would like to, I, I'll save that for number one, but just know that if that number one, if this wasn't a thing, the book I'm going to talk about now would be number one and should technically be number one, but I can't put anything above the other. I mean, you'll, you'll fucking see. Let's just talk about These Witches Don't Burn by Isabel Sterling. How do I even talk about this? Sapphic witches, Isabel Sterling, in fact, herself is queer. Yeah, that's what she represents as. Oh my god. So good. One of the best fantasy, one of the best YA 
queer. I can't fucking wait for this sequel. Okay, okay, let's talk about this. This was a book that I was like, I want to do my own review. I want to do, I want to do a whole separate review for this, but like, I just never did because like, life. Let's talk about the gay first. So our main character identifies as a lesbian. She came out as a lesbian. She dated a girl. That's like a whole main plot in here is that the ex and shit. Um, on page goes lesbian. Pe people try to pin her on other things. No, no, no. She is a lesbian. How often in any literature, not even just YA, do we get someone who is so adamantly like, I am this thing. I'm not going to admit anything. I am a lesbian. And I was like, fuck yes. Fuck yes. There's also a lot of other queer characters in here, obviously. The ex-girlfriend, the new love interest, who identifies as bi. There's a lot of, like, other, like, just randomly queer characters thrown without. There's, like, couples. There's, like, randomly, like, a couple with a child. A same-sex couple with a child. There's a same-sex couple in there, like, witch coven who was, like, trying to adopt the child, I believe. And then there is a random side character who is a queer trans boy, I believe. I know they're trans. I just... I want more from him please i loved him and his tiny little storyline we got um shout out to the best friend who did not do the whole my best friend's a lesbian and likes girls oh no i'm a girl they're gonna hit on me they're gonna be whatever be, make it weird no she fucking loved them her parents made it weird and she was like fuck you that is my friend i love them i'm gonna support them fuck you for thinking that every fucking queer person is predator towards the, anyone of the same sex because that's not how it works duh but like the gay was so good the gay was so good what about the magic the witchiness i think the magic was so well thought out i've read m many a fantasy and sometimes it's just like the same overused shit and sometimes it's just like here's this random thing and here's this and this and nothing's really explained or it just feels a little sloppy or like they were just building so much that it's like what the fuck is the point again i feel like everything was so well thought out everything made sense there's different types of magic and like a lot of it is like earth -y. it just felt not i almost said it felt real not to say the magic isn't real and that witches aren't real or anything like that it just was like this makes sense to me it's easy to follow very contemporary for a fantasy but at the same time it was still like magical and like shit was going on and i'm like yes like blood man there was just so much in it and i'm like thank you thank you i love this it's very easy to follow for a fantasy because it's very like YA and like contemporary-esque with just those little things thrown in there. There's like a twist at some point in here that wouldn't be a twist. I like, I feel like if this was any other book, I would have obviously seen that and been like, okay, yeah, like guessed it. But I'm just was so engaged in every little detail that was going on that I was like, oh, oh, like I didn't even know it was coming, you know? so good but at the same time it, there is some darkness going on obviously like there's a whole thing about like the witches are like being hunted that's a thing there is some deaths and like crazy or shit like that and i just love the way everything was dealt with because it felt so honest and real i'm allowed to grieve but in a very realistic way the way she dealt on um, our main character dealt with like her ex and relationships and seeing this person that was very important to you and all this stuff and dealing with this stuff i just i loved it so much i loved it so much it was so good everyone please read it please i need the sequel already final book everyone put your guesses below and, and no one was surprised no one's gonna be surprised i wasn't surprised call down the hawk by Maggie Steve Otter. First book in her trilogy, which is Ronin's new trilogy. It's the continuation after the Raven Cycle, where we follow Ronin and his journey with navigating the dream world. We meet other dreamers. There's some art heist. It's a lot about um just his family now. You follow the brothers and learning certain things about them and how they went from like, you know, like these side characters in the Raven Cycle to being fully fleshed out people. I was gonna say something, but that might be, that's, I, is that spoiler? Is that spoiler? 
I'm not gonna spoil anything. I refuse to, so I can't talk too much about this. Loved it. I love Ronan. I love the relationship. Ronan and Adam, beautiful. I ended up loving Declan so much. There's some new characters. Is it, is her name Jordan? I feel like her name's Jordan. I watched me already forget. Loved her. I, I loved it. I can't even talk about it. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I love the magic. I love the world. I love Maggie C. Lodge writing, her world building, her character development. Ronan, fucking, 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 fucking. That's Ronan. We're the, that's why, I think that's why I love Ronan. Because we're the, that's the thing. Ronan and I are the exact same person. And that's why he can't be my favorite. That's why I think Adam's my favorite. Because he's so in love with Adam. So like, I'm kind of low-key in love with Adam, I guess? Question mark? I don't know. I just, I love him. I also love Declan so much. Now Declan like, just came up out of nowhere and I'm like, wow, Declan, I see you. I see you. Like you understand so much about like, if you didn't like him in the Raven cycle, one of the things that he did and said and acted and all this shit, so much context as to why he is the way he is. And I'm like, Declan, my sweet boy, I'm gonna take you away. We're gonna go to Disneyland. Just forget about everything. Just do it. Put your fucking phone away. Put all your phones away, dude. But uh, yeah, it's my favorite thing ever. Not only is it tabbed, right? Um, it's like fucking also dog ear for some reason. Also written in and underlined. Like it's so good. It's my favorite thing in the entire world, and I can't. I don't want to wait for the next one. I really don't. I really, really don't. We're gonna get more Adam in University. And I can't do this anymore. Uh, went on for way longer than I wanted it to, but uh, hopefully it didn't sound as stupid as I'm pretty sure I did. And uh, me not being able to explain things didn't deter you from picking up any of these books if you haven't yet. I feel like my reading this past year was very like, eh, books that I really didn't care for. Not even that like I hated or like in my worst books thing. It was just like, I just, okay, done. But um finally did this thanks for being here cool 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 cool